Hey, what's going on summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Kangas and today we're going to go over 10 champions who will absolutely dominate the laning phase. But before we get started, our question of the day is, who do you like to play when you want to win lane? Personally, I love Pantheon, but let us know in the comments down below. Solo queue is all about getting the advantage over your opponent. The best way to do this is by playing strong laners. These are champions that are able to apply heavy pressure on the enemy laner through powerful trades and easy wave control. The best part about these picks is that they're useful outside of lane 2. This makes it super easy to transition your lead from lane into a win. Let's start off with the top lane. One champion who is notorious for his insanely oppressive laning is Darius. If you aren't familiar with him, you're probably not a top laner. He's easily one of the best melee champions to invest in, winning any close range matchup. Darius is a solid blind pick too, but he works exceptionally well when he's facing another melee champ. When you're facing a ranged champion, use your ghost and flash to make aggressive plays early on. When you're level 3, it'll be impossible to run away if you manage to stack up your passive. Against melee champions, your passive and Q are your best tools for winning lane. Once you get good at landing the outer edge of your Q, you'll combine harass and sustain together. If you're in a longer trade, use your W to auto cancel and easily full stack your passive. This bleed damage will quickly stack up until you can go in for the kill. The order you build Force of Nature and Dead Man's Plate can always change depending on what you need that game. The next top laner we're going to talk about is Shen. With tanks being so powerful in the meta right now, Shen is king of both tanks and also bruisers. His Q and W makes it really difficult to trade fairly with him, chipping away at any opponent. Once you've secured your lead, your ultimate will let you join fights and push your team to victory. As Shen, winning trades relies on your ability to position your spirit blade. Using your Q to pull the blade through an enemy champion will greatly empower your next three autos, making it impossible to lose a fight. Do your best to time trades with Grasp. When you're ready to start a fight, your taunt is the best way to start it. Keep in mind that you can taunt Flash, making it really hard for the enemy to react. The best part about Shen is that he can help his team at any time from anywhere. Make sure you're safe before ulting though, because otherwise your late opponent can cancel your ult with CC. You can even use your TP to return back to lane if you need to catch any waves. If you're struggling with map awareness and wave management, our coaches over at ProGuides.com are here to help you 24-7. They're able to answer any questions you might have from champion-specific knowledge to broader concepts, so be sure to check them out. These are the runes and items you'll want to take on Shen. You can switch out your Abyssal Mask for Warmogs if there isn't too much magic damage on the enemy team. Just make sure to finish your boots before finishing Titanic Hydra. The final top laner we'll talk about is Quinn. Her range and mobility are really hard to deal with for most top laners, giving her total control of her lane. If you like to play ranged top laners, Quinn is a perfect choice. Once you're level 6, you can easily roam around the map and cause some mayhem. As a ranged top laner, your number one priority is to make it hard for your opponent to farm. The best way to avoid extra damage is to dip in and out of the lane bushes. This way, you'll lose minion aggro. Use your Q as much as you can, especially since it's an easier skill shot to land. I suggest saving onto your E to save yourself from ganks or engages. After you've secured your lead, the game totally changes at level 6. A good idea is to push in your wave and then roam mid. Most players won't react quickly enough to your gank, making it an easy way to start snowballing the game. These are the runes and items you'll want to take. That's enough about top laners, so let's move to mid lane. The first champion we'll talk about is Zoe. With all the recent nerfs to AP items, Luden's Tempest is barely touched, and thus, Zoe's core strength as a poke and burst champ is at an all-time high. The thing that makes Zoe so powerful is her early game wave clear. A max range Q will chunk down waves faster than most other champions in the game, giving you the advantage when it comes to helping your jungler. Try not to randomly throw out your E either, it's the only source of CC and survivability that you have. Wait to get a few actives from your W and use those to fully shut down your opponent. Once you gain a few levels, shoving your lane and roaming is the best way to impact the game. The best time to roam is after picking up a redemption or a flash. Your ganks will be super strong, and you can easily pick up whatever summoner spells are used during the fight. Here are the runes and items you'll want to build. You can fit in Oblivion Orb and finish Morello later if heal cut is needed. The next champion we'll talk about is Rumble. This pick recently gained popularity in Korea due to his insane kill potential and wave control. Rumble does an excellent job of keeping lane priority with his Q. He also doesn't have to worry about managing mana, meaning he's free to use his abilities without many major downsides. As Rumble, the way you'll dominate lane depends on what kind of champion you're playing against. Against a melee champion like Fizz, use your Q to harass while farming and pushing the wave. Your shield doesn't last that long, so time it with incoming burst. Against ranged mid laners, your goal is to shove the wave while dodging harass. Your shield and E will help you close the distance once you're level 3. 
If you're getting off your electrocute whenever you can, your damage will start to add up. At level 6, Rumble really starts to shine. This is when you want to start looking for kills. You can kill any squishy champion if you line up your ult correctly, so practice it a few times in the practice duel. The best Rumbles can 1v2 even when they're ganked because of how high your damage is. The last mid laner we'll talk about is Annie. She's been a powerhouse for a while with hard to miss CC and a ton of burst damage. Annie wins lane through consistency. She doesn't have any terrible matchups and you're always able to land your damage with her stun. As Annie, your priority is to keep up with the enemy mid and wave control. Your Q should make it easy to last hit while charging your stun. Once you're level 2, you can Q, W, and auto at the same time, instantly proccing your electrocute. Back off and avoid big trades when your stun is down. Once you hit level 6 though, your burst and engage potential really starts to shine. When you find yourself roaming, use your E and W to charge your stun if needed. Flash ulting is the best way to secure a massive burst of damage. And this is what you want for runes and items. You can get a Banshee's Veil instead of Demonic Embrace if the spell shield will help you more in the game. Next, let's move on to the strongest AD carry laners. The first champion we'll talk about is a big fan favorite, Jin. The best part is that he doesn't rely on the expensive crit items currently in the game. He can just use his powerful kit to keep trading in your favor. Jin also works really well with any support, working well with enchanters and tank supports alike. As Jin, try your best to make your Q bounce to a champion. This is a really easy way to harass your opponents without putting yourself in harm's way. Your goal is to poke down with your last autos. While someone like Vayne needs to hit you three times to get her full value, you only need to land one fourth shot. Speaking of fourth shots, don't start an extended trade with your fourth shot. Jin likes to start fights when he's on his second shot, making it easy to weave in your Q and W for maximum damage. While bot lane is decided by two people, Jin can pretty much handle everything on his own if he has to. Jin's item build is currently pretty dynamic after the new Gale Force changes. You should only go Eclipse if you're really ahead and want to finish off the game quickly. If you want to make sure you have better scaling, Gale Force is going to be your go-to mythic. The next champion we'll talk about is Miss Fortune. Her long range and Q make it difficult for the enemy bot lane to farm. The passive speed gain from her W gives her tons of mobility too, making her one of the most mobile AD carries without an official dash. Early on, make sure to use your Q to harass the enemy bot lane, as most players aren't used to playing around this skill, so you'll be able to dominate most lanes most of the time. Also, try your best to avoid auto attacking the same thing twice. This way, you'll always be applying bonus damage from your passive. The best thing about Misfortune is that she really never falls off. Even in lane, you're always a threat with your mobility and damage. Your Q will do massive damage if you manage to use it right, so focus on positioning yourself to land as many as possible. Once you hit level 6 though, you're extremely valuable in any fight or skirmish. Your ultimate is a strong tool, but do your best not to use it at the beginning of a fight. The best time to ult is when you know you're going to hit it, like after an Amumu or Rakan ultimate. Otherwise, it's better for you to play like an AD carry and kite during a teamfight. This is what you'll want to go on Misfortune. You can change your GA for Mortal Reminder or LDR depending on if you need a heal cut or tank shred. QSS into Mercurial Scimitar also isn't a bad idea. The final role we'll talk about is my favorite, Support. Nami is one of the strongest laners after the item changes, using her targeted skills to win trades. Her base ratios make her abilities useful in lane even if you struggle with landing your bubbles. Nami is great at controlling her lane on her own. You don't really need to rely on your AD carry, because with your W and E, trading against the enemy laner is easy. Try not to throw out your Q until someone is slowed by your E. This way, you'll force summoner spells or their dashes. Nami's sustain and poke are what make her so good at laning. Against tanky supports like Thresh, do your best to harass them while hiding in the minion wave. Against enchanter supports, you'll always win your trades if you manage to triple bounce your W. Focus on positioning and watch the enemy bot lane to make the best use of your abilities. You can buy an Iron Sensor before Redemption if you're playing with a hyper carry like Hogma. And the last champion we'll talk about is Leona. She's been a powerful support pick for quite a while now, dominating the lane with her CC and damage. Her E is fast and difficult to react to, making her more accessible than someone like Thresh. Leona can pretty much win lane on her own too. The only time you're weak in lane is level 1, so try to hide in bushes and look to surprise your opponent with a stun when they walk too close. Your goal should be to go in level 2 without getting poked down, so make sure that you're auto-attacking the minions with your AD carry while not getting traded against. At level 2, you can easily threaten a kill on a squishy every time you land your E. This is super important. If you're facing another tanky melee support like Alistair or Nautilus, wait until level 3 before committing to an all-in. You need the tankiness from your W to survive the fight and keep dealing damage. If it doesn't look like you're going to secure the kill, back off after your W wears off. This is what you'll want to go on Leona.
Your final item slot can be a Randuin's instead of Abyssal Mask, depending on what champions you're facing. Well, that pretty much covers all the strongest laners on patch 10.25. Once you start to get the hang of one of these champions, I promise you your solo queue games will get so much easier. We're always releasing new content, so subscribe if you want to stay updated. And also don't forget to respond to our question of the day in the comments below. If we like it enough, we may even feature it in a future video. Thanks so much for watching, Pro Guides fam. And as always, best of luck on the Rift. Stay hydrated and wash your hands.